You may be looking at the best phones of the year. Google humbles both Samsung and Apple when it comes to the value, creating an experience that we never got to see on last year's Pixel 6 devices at the time of the launch. It's been two plus weeks of usage testing out both Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, including my day trip to York with Zone of Tech, testing out camera, performance, battery, 5G, even an accidental drop test, yes, a face first drop test on the concrete. I gotta say, it's been a good in intense experience with some really important things to note which will help you to decide which one to go for. But before we talk about that, the future is finally here. The Unreal Air glasses have truly blown my mind with the super lightweight compact modern design that rests comfortably on your face while giving you a whopping 130 inch screen through the groundbreaking Sony micro OLED displays that simply transform your world. Out of the box you get glasses, the protective case, USB-C cable for connectivity, prescription lens frame, nose pads, and cleaning cloth. It's so easy to set up, just connect your phone through the USB-C cable. If you have iPhone, you can use the Unreal adapter, open the Nebula app, and that's it. You can either do screen mirroring or go to AR space, which is your entry into a brand new universe where you can do anything from watching media like never before to playing games, even to cycling, all in a brand new experience. For anyone, anywhere, anytime, the Unreal AR glasses provides a next gen experience. Click the special link in the description to order now. Alrighty, I'm going to start with the number one complaint that we got on last year's model, which was the software bugs and well, I'm happy to report that in my experience, the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro have been really, really good with no issues. Like I had more bugs on my iOS 16, iPhone 14 Pro Max than Android 13 on the Pixel 7 series. I'm going to say this right now. This has been the smoothest Android experience for me this year. Despite using the Tensor G2, which is not impressing anyone when it comes to benchmarks, yet it delivers incredible daily day-to-day -day performance that is nearly as good as the iPhone. I said nearly because iPhone is still the gold standard. Occasionally, there might still be micro lags, but no one has come this close to the iPhone when it comes to smoothness and consistency to the point where I don't even see the difference, especially on the Pro model with the 120Hz refresh rate. The thing that separates pixels from the other Android phones is that it's got a better third-party apps and UI animations optimization. Like look at this example where Pixel 7 Pro has smooth fluid animation compared to my Galaxy S22 Ultra which has been out for 7 months yet it still suffers from these annoying micro lag issues. In my experience both 7 and 7 Pro have been really good but the 7 Pro is noticeably smoother than the standard 7 thanks to 120Hz. I don't know if it's because of my eyes being used to these screens like I can legit tell the difference between 90 and 120 hertz so for me the pro is definitely extra extra smooth and best of all the experience will get better as the adaptive usage improves now as for android 13 i do miss the extra customization of one ui google definitely has no proper theme engine no lock scene customization which is now present on both samsung and apple's software experience you can't force old apps to take full screen the stock android is definitely a bit limited but the things that it does are very well optimize. Now design wise it's not been a very good experience especially with the pro model with its glossy scratch loving camera visor. It attracts scratches very easily and it's gonna be even more of a scratch mess over time which is why I highly recommend to invest in a skin or a case. Now this is not an issue on the standard pixel 7 because it's got a cleaner look thanks to that matte finish on that camera visor. Both phones are very comfortable to hold actually more comfortable compared to last year's model. That is the first thing I I noticed when I first held them in my hands. I still wish they went with a matte finish because you will still have to deal with those fingerprint on the back. I like the screens on both, flat for the 7, curved for the 7 Pro, they're also reasonably bright outdoor but definitely not as bright as the iPhone 14 Pro. Now when it comes to camera, I don't know why most people are not mentioning the new camera UI. Yes, the new camera UI is actually amazing. The individual zoom points for accurate zooming is here, which I love. They also added Samsung-like zoom lock for the Pro model, so you get more stabilized shots when you really punch that zoom in. The new night mode also allows you to select maximum time so you get the best shot, plus it has a nice new animation. I also like how the camera 
camera doesn't pause music when you're recording in 4K 60fps mode. But what about the camera quality? Well, unlike Apple and Samsung, Google doesn't gatekeep its main sensor only for the Pro model, meaning you get the same high quality 50 megapixel main sensor for both 7 and 7 Pro. You can get amazing quality videos and photos on both phones. The main camera captures stunning ready to post social media photos. This in my opinion is the best phone when it comes to shooting photos, especially in extreme HDR situations where it absolutely crushes the iPhone. Again, considering the price difference, this is absolutely mad. These are also the only phones on the market that can shoot 4K 60fps video on all lenses while also allows you to pause the video and switch lenses while you're shooting. Like for the first time, I'm more than happy with the video performance on these phones. Of course, Apple is still the best for videos, especially in low light and detail wise. Plus the cinematic video on the iPhone 14 Pro lineup is absolutely untouched. Google has their cinematic blur, but it feels a bit half-baked and shockingly, it does not work on the front camera. Like I said, iPhone is still the gold standard for video, but Again, considering the price difference, the Pixel 7 series are doing more than enough. Now what you need to understand is that you're getting the same good core Pixel camera experience on both models, but this is where the Pro, for me personally, is attractive. You're getting the extra long range zoom on the Pro model that has 5x optical and gets up to 30 times. It is surprisingly good compared to the optical zoom that we have on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. The ultra wide is finally on par with the competition because it's now sharp sharper and wider compared to the standard 7 model. Plus, not to mention the macro mode is here for the first time, which lets you take some incredible up-close photos. Now, the biggest issue for me when it comes to camera on these phones is the portrait mode performance at 2x level. It is noticeably bad compared to the iPhone 14 Pro, which does the same thing, but has a much better pleasing result. I wish they added the extra 3x zoom for the portrait mode on the 7 Pro, but the 2x is definitely not a good look. Google still needs to improve Prove some things by no means it's a perfect experience but hey they're also not asking you to pay $1200 like for the price and the features this is a absolute good package lastly battery life has been another area where Google has improved this year over the previous generation it's not the best like the iPhone 14 Pro Max but good enough that for the first time I can switch to a pixel phone and not worry about the battery I know it's gonna get me through the day with a few percentages left as for the other stuff like speaker sound quality and haptics all that stuff is top notch. All in all, I think these phones are the best value on the market, especially the Pixel 7, which will probably end up being the phone of the year. You get the same main camera as the pros, the same chip, the same software experience, and good performance. With that being said, for me and for people that can afford, I'm gonna recommend the Pro. The 120Hz Anwar 13 Tensor G2 combo is ridiculously good. The extra long range zoom that is satisfying enough to even nearly match the S22 Ultra, the new ultra wide with better quality since I use ultra wide all the time plus the added macro mode all that is worth the extra price but if it's just the core Google experience that you're looking for at the best value then 7 will be a great option for a lot of people that's all for this video let me know your thoughts in the comment section below subscribe if you're new here with that being said I'll see you guys later peace out